Hey baby, would you like to go on a date with a sexy figure like me? Huh, I'm sure she can handle my charming personality. Not this crap again. For sake. I finally floated. What did you find? A girlfriend. What? No. That's a shame. I wonder when you're gonna stop being a fucking failure. Say the one that without me writing these lines, it wouldn't talk out of shit. Touche. So, what did you just find? I'm too busy right now to deal with something stupid. I found. I got Magi Tensei again. No chip, that can't be real. Megami Tensei is one of the biggest video game franchises. Something that, if you have watched any of my previous videos before, you know that's the case. The only console that don't have Mega Ten games that I can think of are the Nintendo 64 and the Nintendo GameCube. Consoles I treasure so much that were a commercial failure. Some video game consoles have a big number of entries compared to others. For example, the Nintendo DS and the PlayStation 2 are some of the ones with the most entries from this franchise. But the Megami Tensei console will always be the Super Famicom. Shin Megami Tensei 1, 2, If, Kyuyaku Megami Tensei 1 and 2, Last Bible 3, and Majin Tensei 1 are the games that were released for this legendary hardware. But there is another one, one that not many people want to give it a try after the mix back Majin Tensei 1 was. Is in my opinion, the most underrated Megami Tensei game ever created, Majin Tensei 2, Spiral Nemesis. Sup guys, Carlos here. Today we'll take a look at Majin Tensei 2 to find out how good or bad this game is. The most effective way to let you guys know my opinion is by talking about every single aspect Majin Tensei 2 has to offer. Gameplay, graphics, story, characters, alignments, and soundtrack. If this is the first time you are watching an honest Verde video, at the end of that I'll always answer 4 questions. 1. It is a good video game. 2. Should you really waste your time playing this game? 3. Do you really need to play my Tensei 1 to understand this game? And 4. Is this the best Mega Ten of all time? As I did with the other Megami Tensei games that appear in my Onyx Verdict series, I played this game on my 2DS XL. The worst possible way to play it, to be honest. So the gameplay that you are currently watching is from two special content creators, thanks to Buff Meister, who unfortunately lost his channel after being hacked by some crypto bros, and 4K Gaming for making this video possible today. You guys are the best. Without your effort, my channel wouldn't be possible. Thank you so much. If you like this video, it would mean everything if you could support my channel by subscribing to it, pressing the like button, and pressing the bell button for more notifications. One last thing, if you haven't watched the first Magic Tensei Honest Verdict yet, I highly recommend you to do it before watching this video. I'm going to compare the shit out of that game with Magic Tensei 2 to prove how significantly better this game is. Enough self-advertisement for today. It's time to travel to an era where things were simple. Welcome to Majin Tensei 2, my honest verdict. Majin Tensei 2 is a tactical RPG, or as I love to call them, a game that is pretty much a Fire Emblem clone, but remain the main mechanics that makes Mega Ten, Mega Ten. If you have had the chance to play the first Majin Tensei, or watch any video of it before, you might remember that game was slow as fuck, and saying that is very fucking generous. Playing that awful game without fast forward is the equivalent of CBT. Fortunately this time, the game is a bit faster, but it's still slow as fuck. I don't like the idea of starting this video already comparing both games, but it's simply too goddamn difficult to not do it. My Intensity 2's gameplay is at least 30% faster in everything. The characters movement, the battle animations, the menus, everything you are thinking of is faster compared to the first game. Not only that, but the design of the maps were adjusted to be significantly smaller, which one may think is a big downgrade considering how massive Magic Tensei 1 maps were, but for a video game with a slow gameplay like this franchise, I would take that downgrade any day. You have no idea how important that adjustment was for this game. Majin Tensei 2 not only increased its gameplay speed and decreased the map sizes, 
but it also features new gameplay mechanics and balances that just enhance the experience even more. Now you can control 5 party members instead of 2, which means more possibilities to customize your game plan however you like. At the same time though, more chances to gain a game over if one of them dies. Killing all the demons on the map is no longer the only method to finish it. If you capture the enemy base, the map ends immediately. But if the enemy takes your base, it's an instant game over. Speed is no longer useless. If you are using a weapon and your unit has 6 speed points, compared to the enemy, you can perform a double attack. Online Bungie Tensei 1 where Maka was pretty much useless, now you can waste your money in the shop to buy all the items, weapons and armor you need, which is related to the two following additions. Guns are finally available to use, even though Atsuya from Majin 1 has a gun in his portrait, you cannot use any fire weapons in the first game, something that was finally added to the sequel. Guns are a 2 range weapon that lets you attack from a safe distance, but if the enemy attacks you with a melee attack, you won't be able to counter attack. Weapons and equipment are no longer exclusive for the human allies, now your demons can equip them to increase your chances to survive, an interesting addition that you barely see in Megaten. A new entry means more demons, which means more skills and more magic spells. There is a good reason for fusing demons now. Getting demons by negotiation is not gonna be easy though. There are new negotiation options that make things even easier or more difficult depending on the situation. One thing is for sure however, most of the negotiation lines are so fucking fun that even if you fail to recruit a demon, you're gonna laugh at the end of most of them. You may think that with all the new features, mechanics, demons and possibilities, this game is one of the easiest from this franchise. <laughs> <laughs> you are so funny man, because Majin Tensei 2 is one of the hardest Mega Ten games I ever played in my fucking life. What exactly makes this game hard? You may be wondering, and the answer is no other than the common enemies. What makes Majin Tensei different from Devil Survivor is each demon race has their resistances and weaknesses. In Majin Tensei 2, more demon race were added to make the game more challenging and two of the new races, Dragon Kings and Grim Drakes, are the only enemies that deal double damage to any of the main characters. Grim Drakes have a great mobility, can fly through special terrain, and are so ridiculously fast that if you dare to fight a demon from that race without a good strategy or with the respective counter, you're gonna feel what Mishima felt after every training with Kamoshida. Dragon Kings are no joke either. They have limited mobility and are very slow, but they have the longest attack range from the fucking game. Stay the fuck away from them if you are not fully healed or your ass is gonna get slapped so hard that your grandchildren are gonna feel it. Another minuscular change that you might think that doesn't affect the difficulty that much but is the main reason why this game is so fucking hard is the stat distribution. Most of the Megami Tensei game let you choose how your stats distribution is gonna be at the beginning of the game. In Magic Tensei 2 however, they don't give you a shit. All of your characters are balanced during the first maps of the game and if you don't take your time to think which stat is more important for the following maps, you are gonna have a bad time. If you are looking for a real challenge, this game is definitely for you, and I will give you some tips to make your life easier. Number 1. Be smart with your level up points. This game is hard, and if you don't plan a strategy, things will be more difficult than they should be. What I did was give specific roles for each character. Naoki was my main physical attacker, Aya and Kaoru were the magic casters, Tomoharu was the speedy one who could double attack in every encounter and the fifth party member I focused on making it a tank, someone who could take damage even from dragon kings and grim drakes without dying. Number 2. Don't feel afraid of using your mecha. Money is not a problem in Majin Tensei 2, so if you need to use all of it to buy the best equipment, do it. Number 3. Get Konohana Sakuya, one of the best demons from this game. Not only she has decarm and Saka decarm has magic spells, which are great healing spells with great distances that let you stay in a healing spring during the whole fight, making her an infinite source of healing, but she also has one of the most busted skills from this game, once more. A skill that lets any of your allies act 
twice per turn. It's not that broken compared to Fire Emblem's dancers because you can only use it once per moon cycle here, but in this game, every additional turn you have is well received. Number 4. Always check the affinity chart. The more you know about each race's resistances and weaknesses, the easier each encounter is gonna be. Number 5. Be careful at the end of chapter 27 and 37. In chapter 27, depending on the answer you gave, your alignment will be locked to law slash chaos or neutral. And in chapter 37, depending on the answer you gave again, your alignment will be locked in one of the following options, light law, dark law, light chaos or dark chaos. In my opinion, you should go for the neutral route first. It offers the hardest but most complete experience and an exclusive final boss as well. My Intense 2's gameplay is the perfect example of how you can improve a video game sequel by 100%. Unfortunately, the reason why no one cares about this spin-off is still present, and that being the gameplay is still too slow to be as enjoyable as gameplay such as Persona 5 or SMT5. Another small complaint I have with this game is the lack of new game plus. My Intense 2 has 5 endings that require to take some specific decisions throughout the story to get them. And having to start the game all over again just to get another ending is just painful. And it's not like this game is short either. It took me 86 hours just to get the neutral ending, the hardest one by far. Overall, my intensity 2 is so fucking slow that seeing a snail competing in a race against a turtle is more fascinating than playing this game. However, the different additions and possibilities are so good that can't be ignored. A 5 out of 10 is a fair grade for this gameplay. It's not good or bad, it's just me. My Intensity 2 was released in 1995, a year where the Super Famicom received incredible games such as Donkey Kong Country 2, Chrono Trigger, Yoshi's Island, Dragon Quest 6, and more. Games that were a delight to watch, but we can't say the same for this game. I mean, the game doesn't look that bad. I especially love the number of different sprites there are for each enemy. Yes, there are some recycled sprites for some demons. But between this game and the first one, there is a huge difference. Sadly, the sprite variety doesn't save this game. The game looks way uglier and less detailed compared to Magic Intensive 1. There are no animations that would make you think this game feels great to play. And the map design is more diverse and some actually look good, but most of them still look meh compared to the one seen in the prequel. Yes, I'm comparing Magic 2 with this prequel too much. But it's simply too difficult to make a video about Magic Intensity without mentioning the mix back Magic Intensity 1 was. This, in my opinion, is the only aspect where Magic Intensity 2 will never surpass the first entry. Considering the new sprites that make the game feel fresh, but the lack of details on them and the map design that looks uninspiring compared with the first game, I think a 5 out of 10 reflects my thoughts about the graphics perfectly. If you think I was getting too harsh with this game, from now on you're gonna see how much I suck this game's dick. One day, Naoki, our protagonist, receives an email from an unknown source that affirms his parents died in an explosion in the lab they work in. At the same time, a guy with the power to command demons was able to make Tokyo fall to his knees. A year after both events took place, Naoki decided to join the Partisans, an organization whose mission is to stand against the demons and liberate all the cities occupied by them. You might think that, with the summary I gave you, the story can't be that crazy, right? If you played this game before or watched the video where I talk about how Naoki's life was, you know things will turn into the most unexpected shit imaginable. Magic Intensity 2's plot is unpredictable if you had no idea about this game before, but it can be very confusing due to having so many events and explanations in a short time. If you don't pay attention to a single line of dialogue, you might get lost very easily. Nevertheless, the story is fantastic, it gets deeper and deeper the further you are, 8 out of 10. It's funny to me how this aspect is by far one of my Intensity 2's strongest points, considering how the previous Megatens were. The games that were released before this one have great characters, yet I would love to see more iterations between them. 
The Megami Tensei duology barely had interactions between the characters. Shin Megami Tensei 1, 2, and if, especially this last one, fixed part of the problems by adding more conversations between the main characters, but most of them are just to explain what is happening in the story, and in Last Bible, well, I haven't played any single one of them, but I'm pretty sure they have more interactions compared to Megami Tensei, but way less compared to Shin Megami Tensei. Majin Tensei 2, on the other hand, has one of my favorite main casts from the Megaten history. We have Naoki Takeuchi, a man who is looking for answers about his parents' death. He's one of the most charismatic characters from Megaten in my opinion. Tomoharu Kikuchi, one of the members of the Partisans who is fighting alongside Kaoru to stop the demons. He's the second funniest character in the game and constantly mocks Naoki every time he has the chance. Kaoru Tachibana, the leader of the Partisans a person who only cares for the safety of his comrades. Aya Kikuchi, Tomoharu's sister who joins the partisans to fight alongside Naoki. She is identical to his older brother, to the point that she also mocks Naoki every time she has the chance to piss him off. The funniest character in this game. And finally, we have the other two important characters, Karen Brownrose, a woman whose only purpose is to complete her mission. Ha! <laughs> I will never see a woman. Mommy, I'm sorry. Mommy, I'm sorry. Mommy, I'm sorry. Mommy! And Masakiyo Ojiwara, the person who invaded Tokyo because of a specific reason that I prefer not to reveal. I don't want to get into details about every character's backstory because I'm trying to encourage you to play this game. Despite this, every time the characters have the opportunity to talk with each other, it always makes you laugh, feel empathy, or even questioning yourself if what you are doing was the best choice. A type of interaction that I saw in the first Megaten I ever played, SMT4. My Intensei 2's characters are fucking fantastic. Some interactions are so good that you don't even have to play this game and you are still gonna find them funny. 10 out of 10. I might be very biased with this, but fuck it, I love each one of the partisans. Alignments in Megaten are important. Aside from recruiting and fusing demons, alignments are the second most important aspect in any Megaten. Shin Megami Tensei 1 was the first one that features law, neutral, and chaos endings. Megami Tensei 2 doesn't count. Here there are just good or bad endings. But Magi Tensei 2 is the first one, and I'm pretty sure is the only one that has light and dark variations of the law and chaos alignments. As I said minutes ago, Majin Tensei 2 has 5 endings, with different dialogue lines and final bosses that pretty much means the end of the conflict from a different point of view. I can't speak for the other routes and endings outside of the neutral one because the lack of new game plus turned me down so hard. One day I'll finish each one of them though, maybe in a challenge, who knows. Nevertheless, after watching how the other routes end, I can say for sure, just go for the neutral route. Please, it's the only one that is worth it. It may not have the most satisfying ending, but the journey to reach the credits roll is such a good challenge. The alignments and endings from this game aren't that bad at all, but if we compare it with SMT2 for example, the difference is way too much. For being just above average, but nothing that special, I think 6 out of 10 fits perfectly for Magic Tensei 2's alignments. Man, get ready for the most epic sucking sync to a retro video game. My Intensive 2 Spiral Nemesis has, and I will never say this for another game, the best soundtrack from this franchise. The soundtrack was composed by Hirohito Aoki, who composed the Majin Tensei 1 and Megami Moroku Persona soundtracks, and Misaki Okibe, who composed Megami Moroku Persona and Persona 2 Innocent Sin soundtracks. It's surprising how two old school composers made, in my opinion, the richest, most catchy, and most epic soundtrack from this series. If you think I'm exaggerating, I'm gonna show you how good this crap is. But a friendly reminder first. This game was released in 1995.
My intense to soundtrack is, in my opinion, the definition of perfection. It has a track for any music takes imaginable. Compared to Magic Tensei 1, that only has less than 20 tracks, this game almost double it and make it 100% fucking better. For the first time in this channel, and definitely the last one, the soundtrack of Magic Tensei 2 deserves an 11 out of 10. It's time to add all the points from all the aspects of this game to find out how good or bad this game is. We got 5 on gameplay, 5 on graphics, 8 on story, 10 on characters, 6 on alignments, and 11 on soundtrack. This gives the total of 7.4 out of 10, leaving my intensity 2 on the same place as SNT5 and Persona 2 Eternal Punishment. And I'm dead serious about this. I fucking love this game. Now it's time to answer the questions I mentioned at the beginning of this video. Is my intensity 2 Spiral Nemesis a good video game? Of course it is, if you had the patience of a Chinese monk. This game is not as bad as everyone says. In my case, the gameplay's innovation were enough to make me know how slow this game can be. Should you waste your time playing this game? If you love all TRPGs, I can see myself recommending you this game. Especially if you love Fire Emblem. Though, why are you playing this game instead of a good Fire Emblem like Genealogy of the Holy War? Do you need to play my Intensive Quant to understand this game? Absolutely not. There are some references from the first game's events every now and then, but there isn't a single event that requires you to play the first entry. Is my intensity 2 Spiral Nemesis the best game on Megaten? As much as I love to suck this game's dick, it's far from being the best one. My intensity 2 is one of those games that you remember with fun after playing it once. But the more you play it, the more you realize the game edge like crap that deserves a remaster, remake, or whatever treatment Atlus can do to make this game shine once again. With increased gameplay speed, detailed animations, and of course, voice acting. But that's just an impossible dream considering how popular Persona is nowadays. They might remake Persona 4 first, and instead of investing, they pay a lot more money and time to make my intensity back to life. And that's why I think this is a great game. Once that you sure give it a portion. I have to confess something. Huh? You? Okay. It has to be something very important to interrupt a video like that. What is it, man? You know, the only reason why I still have to deal with your chit is that <laughs> ordered me until I fulfill my mission. Bro, I already know what you what? Fulfill your mission? Yes, and it's finally time to complete it. Goodbye, son of a bitch. You motherfucker! Wow, three weeks. It only took me three weeks to make a video about a video game that I finished in March. My intensity to might not be the Holy Grail or Megaten, but you have no idea how much I enjoyed this game. It's one of those games that I want to get a physical copy of it, but the prices are a bit too high to waste the little money I have in a video game that I'm planning to leave on a shelf for the rest of existence. And with that, we finally finished the last video of this year, and I gotta say, it was a fantastic one. During the last of this year, I met so wonderful people, my channel grown significantly, and people that don't even care about Mega then started watching my videos, something that I thought I would never achieve. And all of this, unironically speaking, was thanks to Megaten. Something that I thought I would never sell in my fucking life. Nah, I'm joking. All of this is thanks to you. Thank you so much for allowing me to make you smile. I hope you have a wonderful Christmas with your family. And we will see you guys again in 2024. Happy New Year! Man, this was a fantastic year.